said, I was listening to you carefully, mm -hmm. that after finishing your degree, you were taken to Nipa to learn. Yes. Uh, one day I was playing golf with uh, the late Bruce Munyama. Okay, yeah, the lawyer. Yeah. So rest mm -hmm. in peace. Yeah. He was a foreign affairs permanent secretary at, in the States, yeah. mm -hmm. at Independence. He said to me, uh, Pastor Chiluba, in those days, you would not write a letter as a civil servant no. without concluding by saying uh, most obliged. Exactly. And every letter had yeah. a standard exactly. how to write it. Exactly. But now, most of the civil servants are cadres. Yeah. I have never been a civil servant, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. most of the service, maybe most is a bad word, some, some of yeah. the mm -hmm. civil servants yeah. Yeah. are cadres who exactly. cannot even write no. a professional letter. No. And I've got problems with that. How do you, how do you address such things? Now, what happened, as we were going along, we, President Kaunda and his colleagues realized that we were going a different direction. President Kaunda started writing. He wrote Humanism Part 1, Humanism Part 2. All that he was trying to say is, I want you people who claim now to be educated, who can read, mm. to read how you are around in a community, who you are. Mm. You are only in that community and recognized by the people who are around you. Mm. If you are alone, who will recognize you? And that is what now he started talking about humanism. So later on then he said, no, these young people get astray. So we had uh, some studies in West in the uh, uh, Caribbeans of their national service. So President Gawanda introduced the national service. The idea was, let these people, young people, go to a place where they will be taught what it means to be a Zambian. Mm. And that is how National Service was brought. But instead of just learning about the theories and the theology and so on of Ubuntu and so mm. on, he said, I want them to start producing. Now, they start producing, but again, some of them who didn't go through that system, they didn't know how really and what that system was meant to be. If you go around now, uh, Pastor Jerobe, and you find a civil servant, perhaps let's say 10 years younger than me, 10, 5 years, their behavior is different from the young people now. The national service was to inculcate this idea of patriotism, nationalism, that you are a Zambian, and this Zambia has geographical boundaries, and it's your responsibility to look after this Zambia, and anybody in this country called Zambia. Mm. Now, what became a problem, I think we had one year when some, I think a quarrel broke in some of the, uh, some of the camps. So people recommended closing the national service. And really, one would say, by the time uh, late Mwanawasa was thinking of having cleared the balance sheet of Zambia now with no debt, mm. what are we going to do with the people now? And uh, I and a few of us said, we have to go back to national service. Mm. In fact, we had already planned that come 2010, would reintroduce the national service. Mm. The idea was that we introduce a service that anybody who gets accepted to go to a, a college after form five or grade 12 mm. must go to national service. Mm. Whether they have been accepted by a private university or a private firm, mm. before they go to work, before they go for further training, they should go to national service. The idea was that perhaps in another five, ten years, we would have produced a Zambian who is patriotic and nationalistic. Mm. Then together with that, we said, what about the young people? They can't go to national service. 
So we are in the process of readjusting the syllabus for primary school. And we had planned that part of the money which was now being saved from HIPIC would go into support of nurseries, nursery schools, the whole country. They would be owned by private people. They would together own those schools in conjunction with the government. And the government would introduce a syllabi, a syllabus for those nursery schools. And then we said, but then these chaps will come out very bright, young people, others drop out. So we said, those who drop out, then we introduce an entrepreneurship program. As they drop out, then they go to learn skills and they become useful citizens. Those who continue, we think that in 20 years' time, they will finish their primary, secondary school, university, and that will be about 20, 25 years. Mm. Then these are the people we said, you are going to produce the Zambia of 2030. Now, that is where Vision 2030 came from. Mm. We wanted to trace a chap who started nursery school in 2010. After 20 years, they finish university. They must be an engineer who understands what Zambia is. So, is that program being implemented? Because when you are leaving office honorable, uh, you people who work in secular offices, yeah. or you've worked there, there is a program called handing over. That's right. Did you hand over to the minister of finance who took over? Mm -hmm. uh, did you hand over that vision or document Vision 2030, because the way you have explained it to me, mm -hmm. that's when it has made sense. I just knew Vision 2030. <laughs> I didn't know where it was coming from. Now, to start with the, the skills development, we already had a lot of skills training institutes around. So what we did was, the first people to benefit out of the hippie savings were going to be people coming out of these trades institutes. Mm. So in 2007, 2006, it was decided that these people, as they come out of their colleges, on the left side, which is weaker, they will hold a certificate, a piece of paper. Mm. On the right side, they will hold a sewing machine because they went to f and finished the sewing course mm. at the Gawe Trades. Those who went to finish a, a brick laying, they would have a box of trowels. Mm. Those who finished the mechanical engineering, they would be having a spanner mm. box. And then in 2007, uh, Pastor Chiruba, you won't believe it, we managed to equip 3,000 graduates of trades institutes with, mm. the, with the equipment and the tools of their trade. And the, President Mwanawasa had a ceremony at Lusaka Trades here where he handed over this equipment. Mm. And we said, this is the beginning. From now, anybody who finishes a course at a trades institute, whether that trades institute belongs to the Catholic bishop or it belongs to, to some other institution or mm. to some clever guy who has started it, as long as it was registered by government, we are going to equip the graduates with the tools of their trade. Now, the idea was this. If you have so many of these young people, and they are from all over, five of them find themselves in Mongu, and they did the carpentry. Those guys, with the tools that they were given wherever they graduated, they would go to Mongu Trades Institute, report themselves there, and then the institute would help them to register a public company. The 10 of them would register a public company. And then from there, all works which is required on government assets, these are the chaps whom we would say, go and repair the, uh, the secondary school at, uh, at, what, at whatever it is, at Sananga. Secondary is there would be yeah. already people with the knowledge, they have now tools and they have a job to do. 
so that after so many years, these guys would become now very big companies. They could take on any job. In fact, in that year, we had uh, two guys, three guys who finished in uh, mechanics. And they said, Look, mechanics is very wide. We said, what do you want? They said, we want equipment which we can use to save the vehicles. And we bought three machines. One guy was from Jipata, the other one from Mongo, the other one from Kabwe. The idea was that once he goes there and he reports at Kabwe Trades Institute, they would help him with that equipment to settle. The young people then who go to Kabwe Trades School, they would go to that company for their practicals. Mm. Because that guy already has got equipment. Mm. Next door, there will be a company of builders, bricklayers. Mm. And the people that were doing bricklaying at Kabwe Trades would go to that company for their practicals. Mm. Then it meant that we would not have young people coming out of Kasama Trades Institute and saying, I have no tools. The tools are elementary. And we said to ourselves, uh, Pastor Chiluba, you can imagine a young girl coming out of uh, uh, Kanyama, going to uh, Kabwe Trades Institute. As she finishes there, she has got a certificate and a sewing machine. Arrives home where there's a grandmother who has been saying, what are you doing? She says, here is my certificate. I know you can't read, but here is a sewing machine. I want all your old Tony clothes. Uh, uh, clothes. You bring them here. I want to show you what I learned. I mean, how much personality would you build up out of somebody like that? And that is now what you are asking me. Did you hand over? We didn't hand over notes. Mm. We practically did this in 2007. And the money was there, which was no more going to the World Bank, no more going to Japan to pay the loans. Mm. It was there. And we had said, all these projects then will make sure that somebody who is able to start uh, making plates, they will start making plates, hippie project. Mm. Hippie project. Mm. After 10 years, 20 years like now, you would be able to go to a secondary school or to a hospital and find done by hippie project number so and so and so. Right now, Zambians don't know that where we are now, we were there before, but there were people who managed to come out of this. And that was basically... Yeah. I want you to repeat what you have said, yes, Honorable. Pastor. It gives a lot of hope to me. You know, uh, you are saying where we are now. Yeah. We were there before. We were. Yes, we were. And you were in the mix of it. Exactly. So, do you see us coming out of this situation? If I can give a, 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 a condition, mm. if you are able to get to some civil servants, even 10 of them, select them, go to somebody responsible for them, and say for the next nine months, we are going to control your interest, mm. your travel. Just your travel. These civil servants can be in any field. Mm. And you tell them, we want to control your impress for the next nine months. Mm. If in nine months they finish their tours and they have been writing reports mm. and none of them had, has stolen one kwacha, mm. then you come to me and I will say, now we are going in the right direction. It's, it's not an easy thing, uh, Pastor Jiluba. Integrity. Mm. Mm is very very difficult just to be able to do the right thing without anybody looking at you like you said writing a report on a pen yes and a notebook yes which you have to surrender to show where it went this time i'm sure if we were even just to say here are pens here, there's a conference here. At the end of the conference, some people will have 10 pens. <laughs> and that is, they only have one hand to write with. <laughs> it's incredible. There, there has come this culture of just greediness. Mm. We did a lot of work on agriculture 
and I worked with the FAO, with the World Bank, with the ADB, with the European Union, the Japanese rice projects, and so on. And a long time ago, somebody wrote, it is not lack of food that people are hungry. It's just that greed has taken over. There are people who want like to keep food as if they have four tummies. <laughs> they don't want to share. Mm. Even now, as I'm saying, I'm sure a lot of people don't realize that as a public servant, you don't want anything in that public office. Mm. You don't. The only thing you own are the clothes and the shoes that you go with in the office and your brains. Mm. When you leave that office, everything remains in that office. What happened, unfortunately, in 1991, your namesake came in. Mm. And uh, a lot of educated young people joined the government mm. at very high levels as ministers. We had a, a 23-member cabinet. Out of those, 14 had PhDs, doctor of philosophy. Mm. And a lot of people said, everything is going to be all right. Mm. And I was one of those dancing and I said, how do these educated people fail? Mm. Out of 23, 14 were PhDs. The rest were had masters, 10 masters, whatever it is. But then what happened, unfortunately, the Zambian administrative system broke down. Mm. The first day, I think we had the elections somewhere in December or somewhere there, mm. 1991. 91, yeah. yeah. In 1992, after the rains like now, the first time I saw a convoy of GXs with flowers, wedding flowers, gallons of flowers, four of them, around the post office uh, bridge. I, had, I was with my children. I told them, they said, what is this, daddy? What is this? I said, these are government vehicles. He said, but they have flowers. I said, yes, it's a wedding ceremony. One of my young, young boys, a very clever boy, he said, but where, where is your car? And at that time, I was already somebody somewhere. And I said, I don't have a car because I didn't want to give you the impression that these things belong to us. This convoy went into Cairo Road hooting a, we a wedding ceremony. And immediately I got home, I told my wife, I said, the country has gone. Mm. This time, I don't know how many of those weddings are held with the GRZ. People have no qualms about that government of the Republic of Zambia, and you go to a wedding. It's a wedding of your nephew or your niece. The other people who own that vehicle you are driving, they are in Jinsali, they are in Sinazongwe, and you are misusing their property, and they have nowhere to go. That so, is our problem. So you are saying that if we had to get back on track yeah. we must control the controlling officers the impress they use when you are located the money you should be able to surrender it and be able to account for how you used it and that is what basically you are saying you must control but you also said did you hand over the time that i was leaving the ministry government ministry it was five and a half years in the ministry responsible for money. Mm. And I used to make sometimes two hours for one, two weeks. I'm negotiating in Moscow. Then I take a, a trip down all the way to a World Bank. Then from there up, I'm in the Netherlands. After five and a half years, I didn't leave one quarter of impress unaccounted for. Really? No. If you go now, you ask my officers, whom we traveled with that time, perhaps out of the whole lot, you find 90% of 
followed what I was doing. Because before they got to settle down in the ministry from where to are with me, they would be asked, but you have delayed. The minister retired his impress two days ago. Where have you been? No, sir, because I was given another job. Next time, we are going to deduct your money. And they were doing that. This time, Pastor Jiluva, I wonder who is doing that. Mm. Most likely, even my officers, they discovered that not retiring an impressed is the norm. And they just say, who reported to parliamentary? I never went to parliament, even for my ministry, to report an retired impressed. No. It isn't my money. The money is that, here is the money, you go to World Bank, like now it's spring meetings, you go to World Bank, this is all you can spend. When I come, I say, here are the receipts, I was in this hotel. What amazed me, uh, Pastor Jeruba, is that as I was going into the office, the first trip I made, my officers were saying, which hotel do you want to live in in London? I said, me, I have never lived in London for more than one day, so put me <laughs> in any hotel. Mm. And then they brought names of the hotels. I decided I'm going to check with the high commissioner there. This hotel, where is it? They tell me, ah, it's about five kilometers from the town. How much is it? Oh, 1,000 pounds. I said, not this one. By the time I called my officers, I said, how do I go to London on a government business, go in a hotel five kilometers out of, five kilometers away from the high commission, and I'm paying 1,000 pounds per day? What job are you sending me for? I will be spending most of the time talking to the people, not in the hotel. This 1,000 pounds, the bed is there, is as good as mine here. Why should I take this money? And one of the officers just said, Oh, a minister. I said, I'm sorry. I used to live in a hotel across the high commissioner. Across the high commissioner. That's where I used to live. And that meant when I was at the hotel, I could easily walk across and go and have a chat with the high commissioner on what I have done. Like I say, and like you said, were there handover notes? They were not only handover notes, they were demonstrations. If you go and ask the old man, uh, KK, what his habits were when he was in government, there are habits which a lot of people saw. But then they decide, I want to live differently. I will ignore these rules, the general orders. I will ignore them. And that is how he is old, uh, KK, he, he, he retires 27 years. Right now, my age mate, K, uh, K, Keno Kaunda, he has to struggle to produce food to sell or tobacco to sell to feed his grandchildren. The son of a former president. The son of a former president for 27 years, not for uh, two years. And there is Dr. Kaunda. I haven't heard anybody saying, I found Dr. Kaunda in a hotel in Cape Town and they were telling me this is his hotel. No. So the public serves broke down. May his soul rest in peace when FTJ came in power. Mm. The young people just went and they said, we have no more ways to chase us. We have no more freedom fighting to do. We are going to enjoy ourselves.